Hello, this is Alex Lamb. Today I'm going to be talking about a 2017 ICML paper called Learning Hierarchical Features from Generative Models uh, from Stefano Ehrman's lab at Stanford. I'm going to review the main ideas and results of this paper, but it will also be a critical review because my interpretation of the results of the paper and the conclusions that I draw from the study differ significantly from those of the author. At a high level, this paper discusses directed latent variable models. The hierarchical latent variable model discussed in the paper has a generation hierarchy which starts from a prior and runs towards increasingly latent or increasingly concrete latent variables until outputting from the visible space at the final step. The inference hierarchy starts from a real data point and produces latent variables which become increasingly abstract as one moves up the hierarchy until a point in the space of the prior is estimated at the highest level. Now at optimality, these hierarchical latent variable models have the same joint distribution in the inference hierarchy and the generation hierarchy. The basic critique presented in this paper is that a block Gibbs sampling chain between X and the lowest level of latent variables is sufficient to sample from the joint if the model is trained to optimality. Now, if the model is optimal, then the generator distribution P and the inference distribution Q match, which means that the lowest level, the joint, between Z1 and X also matches. So as the argument goes, only the lowest level is needed to generate and the higher levels are redundant. Experiments shown with hierarchical variational autoencoders support this claim. Uh, so there, here are some examples of experiments that are uh, compatible with this. So just running a block Gibbs sampling chain between the visible space and the lowest level of latent variables seems to be sufficient for sampling from the distribution. And yet, there is an example of a hierarchical latent variable model which obeys the optimality condition, and yet which is also quite valuable. That's the resolution hierarchy. These models start from a low resolution generated image and progressively generate the image at higher resolutions while conditioning on a slightly lower resolution version of the image. Uh, so you can see some examples here of a model which generates at 64 by 64 uh, and then has a model which generates at 256 by 256 conditioned on the 64 by 64 image. Uh, and as you can see, this works considerably better than generating directly at 256 by 256. Uh, my intuition for why this works well is that different levels of the hierarchy take on responsibility for modeling distinct factors of variation in the data. Namely, the low resolution, high level is only responsible per, for the presence of rough shapes of objects, whereas the higher resolution, low level is responsible for capturing texture and fine grained details, and because it conditions on the lower resolution version, it does not have to also model things like object shape directly. Uh, so right now it seems like we've presented two contradictory facts. Uh, first, we have the paper's argument that hierarchical latent variable models will only use the lowest latent layer when trained to optimality, and the higher level latent variables are redundant and unnecessary. On the other hand, we have an example of a latent variable model which is trained to optimality where the higher level latent variables are extremely useful. So. Uh, how do we make sense of this? Well, the answer is that Gibbs sampling is not guaranteed to work for any distribution. It only works on a special class of distributions, and we'll show soon that this includes the most interesting hierarchical latent variable models. To give an example of where it fails, uh, suppose you have a distribution where all the density is assigned to either the top right corner or the bottom left corner. Uh, as you can see in my little illustration. So when you do Gibbs sampling, there won't be any mixing between the two modes, and the proportion of points that you have will, will just depend on where you initialize your Gibbs sampling chain. So for example, if your prior is just uh, some space in the, the top right corner, then when you run your Gibbs sampling chain, all of your samples will just stay in that top right corner.
so what you might be thinking now is, uh, isn't Gibbs sampling always supposed to work? And the answer is that Gibbs sampling is actually quite restricted in the cases where it works. Uh, basically, Gibbs sampling is the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm, but with the proposal distribution set to be a conditional distribution for some subset of the dimensions. With normal Metropolis-Hastings, the point sampled from the proposal would need to be stochastically accepted with a probability based on how likely the new point is and how unlikely the reversal is under the proposal distribution. But with Gibbs sampling, these two ratios cancel out exactly, so the acceptance probability is always 1. However, accepting with a certain probability isn't the only condition required for Metropolis-Hastings to work. For example, suppose in a simple hypothetical that we want to sample from the distribution uh, normal with a mean of 0, variance of 1, and our proposal is always just to return the value 0. Uh, so right at the center. So we can accept points with a certain probability uh, if we're doing Metropolis-Hastings with that proposal distribution, but all we'll do is we'll just sample the point at zero. We won't actually sample from the correct data distribution. Now I would present the argument that this limitation in Gibbs sampling is relevant for pretty much all of the hierarchical latent variable models that we care about. So think about the resolution hierarchy that we discussed earlier. If we simply run a block Gibbs chain over the lower level of the hierarchy, uh, it would look like this chain of images that you see at the bottom. It would just consist of repeated operations of upsampling and downsampling, but only between the highest and second highest resolutions. In many ways, this is analogous to our artificial example of a distribution with well-separated modes. At higher resolution, almost all of the density is concentrated along a specific manifold which is tightly coupled with a slightly lower resolution version of the image. So the Gibbs chain will fail to mix. Uh, the implication here is that in a hierarchical latent variable model where the hierarchy is useful, the higher levels of abstraction are needed to bridge the gap between different islands of density. So uh, what's the right conclusion? Uh, hierarchical latent variable models are still useful, uh, even if they're trained to optimality, meaning that the generation chain and the inference chain uh, follow the same distribution. Running a block Gibbs chain on the lowest level of the hierarchy could be a good diagnostic for testing models. And additionally, the results of this paper highlight why injecting Gaussian noise in the lower levels of a hierarchical latent variable model is potentially quite a bad idea. Uh, so one fun open question is, uh, to what extent should we inject noise in the lower levels of the hierarchy, which is independent of other observed variables? So Maybe one possible conjecture is that under an optimal model, almost no noise should be local, but we could make our models cheaper by using some well-selected local noise. Uh, for example, if I'm going to a zoo and it has a room full of kangaroos, uh, maybe if I knew before entering the room the exact psychology of the kangaroo and the contents of the room, there would be a way that I could figure out the exact spatial coordinates of the kangaroos. But in practice, it might be easier to just say that their exact position is, is going to have some randomness. Uh, so that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I did still like the paper, but I, I just had some, some, uh, some perspective on what conclusions we should draw from it. So... Uh, that's it. Bye.